Oakland-based poet Shelja Patel is packing her family treasures, filled with memories from home in Nairobi, Kenya. All the saris I have were passed down to me, most of them from my mother, and many of those come from her mother or from her elder sisters. She's bringing them to her rehearsal at the ODC Theater in San Francisco. The saris are the centerpiece of her show, a spoken word performance infused with dance and photography she titled Migritude. Migritude is a word that I essentially coined. I was looking for a word that captured migrant attitudes or the idea of migrants with attitude, a generation of migrants who don't feel the need to be silent in order to protect themselves. Instead, Shelja has filled Migritude with vignettes about life under colonial rule. I grew up as a brown minority citizen of a black majority post-colonial African nation. And there's so little understanding of how the political reality of Africa today is dramatically shaped by hundreds of years of colonialism and that that hasn't changed. I care because I was born and raised in Kenya. I grew up there. That is my family. Those, that is my world. Migritude is also the evolution of Shelja's poetry from slam to the theater. It's her first one-woman show and the culmination of two years of writing and rewriting. Migritude came out of writing pieces that were bigger than slam, that wanted to engage with bigger issues in a way that was more intricate and in-depth. Have you ever sliced a heart on a curve? I'm gonna make a and around that time, I met my director, Kim Cook. She said, I'd like to make work about the South Asian diaspora, and I'd like to make work about the post-colonial oppression of women. And later she said to me, she heard those things and thought, yeah, yeah, every earnest young poet wants to do work about imperialism and about identity, but there needs to be something else that engages an audience. She said, my mother gave me my trousseau a year ago. She packed up my trousseau of saris and jewels and sent it to me. So of course in my head I'm going, now that's interesting. Okay. Snatch the mangoes out of their hands, turn them into a distant dream. In 1972, the military dictator of Uganda expelled Uganda's entire South Asian population. So that had a domino effect of tremendous fear and insecurity for the South Asian population in Kenya. So I grew up very much with this sense of, we don't have a future here. And that's one of the dominant themes of Migritude. In one of the pieces of Migritude, I say, Ratori Nevesh Jaja, and the meaning of that is don't put down roots, don't get too comfortable because by morning we may have to pack everything up and leave. And I remember my parents saying that over and over again through my childhood. Kim and Shelja agreed they wanted Migritude to be more than traditional spoken word. So Kim brought in dancer Parajit Desai to begin shaping it into a performance that combined poetry, dance, and photography. Yeah, okay, so we'll start with that. ODC is the largest venue Shelja has performed Migritude in so far. When I go into, I just need to wait for a cue from you before I go into. They have just one day to perfect the staging, lighting, and choreography before a night of performance. Look, you're off course. The pressure is on. Here, not directly into the suitcase, but yeah. They use every possible minute to rehearse, right up until the house doors open. When the box office opens, nearly all of the seats are sold. This is the history we didn't read. These are the oral testimonies of women survivors of the camps. We don't really understand what's going on in Africa here. And so to me, bringing that hidden reality to people 
is the beginnings of changing the way that the world thinks about Africa and interacts with Africa. Of the last trains coming out of Uganda, laden with traumatized Asians, stripped of all they possessed. What I saw in Shelja was a certain universality to the story that she was telling. The second thing is charisma. And the third thing is just energy, which she has in abundance. But I hear something like a bell that rings when I hear her. Don't stride, Shelja. Your stride is so unfeminine. How can you ever walk in a sari if you stride like that? At the beginning of this process, the idea was just to find a way to use the saris so they didn't sit in a suitcase. The only thing I ever heard was, you have to be careful in a sari because you're exposing the body. Don't let the palo slip under the breast. That's obscene. And as part of that, what I had to do was learn how to wear them and become comfortable performing in them. And I came up against all my own fears and resistances around perceptions of women in saris, my own fears about being immobilized or weak or exoticized when I was wearing a sari. But creating migratude also opened her eyes in ways she didn't expect. I came into contact with just the real beauty of interacting with these amazing pieces of clothing and the family history they carry and all the parts of myself which in a lot of ways, as a lot of migrants do, we cut off many bits of ourselves and we censor many parts of ourselves in order to get along in the new societies that we've moved to. So now they are incredibly precious to me. Mother, I will never live the cocoon of safety you dreamed of for your daughters. You see, I will always be called to stride into danger zones, to shout forbidden words to other fugitives, because, Mommy, you of all people know that before we claim a word, like love, like justice, like truth, before we claim a word, we speak it. With the very marrow of our bones, we have to earn its meaning.